What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. So here in the book of uh, Malachi, chapter 2 of Malachi. And uh, in chapter 1, uh, we read about the false prophets, the prophets, the false teachers, the preachers in the church these days that are uh, that aren't telling people to repent. That are preaching, as some people call it, greasy grace. <laughs> that uh, aren't turning people from their wickedness. That are just telling people, simply believed and you have simply believe in Jesus and you have eternal life and you don't have to do anything else. Which isn't the case. That's where it starts. It starts with a belief in Jesus. And that's the main thing. It's faith in Him, but... What do we turn to God for? What do we turn to Jesus for? Yes, eternal life. Well, we turn to Him for salvation from our sins. Meaning, we're repenting of our sins. We're apologizing to God. Turning, we're repenting. Which is turning from our old ways and giving our life to God through faith in Jesus that He'll save us and forgive us. And many pastors these days don't preach that. Even the true ones. Even the true pastors, and, and I mean true ones, meaning that uh, many are false and aren't even of God at all. They're infiltrators tears, the thorns, which many are demons, actually, demons in the flesh. And a lot of people don't realize this. Most people don't realize this. But uh, check out my Hosea 2 Bible study for more on that. But here we are in, Ho in Malachi chapter 2. Give me one second. Uh, they don't want to pull up. Malachi chapter 2. And now this commandment is for you, O priests. Priests or pastors. Leaders of the people of God. If you do not listen, and if you do not take it to heart to honor my name, says Yahuwah of hosts, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, then I will send the curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. And indeed, I have cursed them already. Because you are not taking it to heart. And to honor his name. Is to honor his authority. Honor his reputation. See. To honor his reputation, his authority. What this is referring to specifically here in Malachi chapter 2 is not teaching people to turn from their sins not telling people to repent it's telling people simply believe and then you can do whatever but it's, it's through belief through faith that that we're saved and and it is, it is through faith that we're saved but if we have a true faith and repentance God gives us the Holy Spirit which leads us to walk in righteousness that which leads us to walk in the ways of God To honor his name, like I said, is to walk in all his ways, to not, to not make him look bad in any way, to not present defiled food upon his altar, which is his word and, and offering up people, offering up believers to him, saying, we have this many, basically we have this many that are saved, saying, uh, Lord, here's another person that we brought to faith brought uh, to faith in you. But that person hasn't turned from their sins. That person is just uh, basically a false convert. If you do not listen and do not take heart, take it to heart to give honor to my name, says Yahuwah of armies, the Lord of hosts. 
Then I will send the curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. And indeed, I have cursed them already because you are not taking it to heart. Behold, I am going to rebuke your offspring. And I will spread refuse on your faces. Refuse is vomit. And refuse, and the refuse, the vomit of your feasts, and you will be taken away with it. And we see this in a few places. We see this with the church of Laodicea. We see this here in Second Peter chapter 2. We read in verse, starting in verse 21. For it would be better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than to having known it, to turn away from the holy command, commandment handed to them. For it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a sow after washing returns to wallowing in the mire. We read in Job chapter 20. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll just skip this one. We read in Proverbs 26, verse 11. Like a dog, dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. And in this case, it's referring to the pastors who are telling the people that they don't have to turn from their folly. They don't have to turn from their sins. It's okay to live in that, to live in their vomit, to live in the sins that they are turning to God to be forgiven forgiven for. Give me one second. I have a couple of scriptures pulled up, but God's leading me which ones to read, which ones to not. Isaiah 28, 7, 7 through 9. And these also reel from wine and stagger from strong, strong drink, which is uh, the, the alcohol, the wine, the strong drink represents doctrine. The priest and the prophet reel from strong drink. They're confused by wine. They stagger from strong drink. Speaking about false doctrines. They reel while having visions. They totter when rendering judgment. For all their tables are full of filthy vomit without a, without a single clean place. Back in Malachi. Behold, I am going to rebuke your offspring, and I will spread refuse on your faces, the refuse or vomit of your feasts, and you will be taken away with it. Then you will know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant may continue with Levi, says Yahuwah of hosts, the Lord of armies. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to him as an object of reverence. So he revered me, and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and unrighteousness was not found on his lips. So, so uh, the opposite of that, the opposite of these false teachers not teaching people to turn from their wickedness, was Levi. And Levi, the house of Levi, where the priests were ordered to teach the people were ordered to carry out the law and teach the people God's commandments true instruction was in his mouth and unrighteousness was not found on his lips he walked with me in peace and uprightness and he turned many back from iniquity for the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge and men should seek instruction from his mouth for he is the messenger of Yahuwah of armies, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. But as for you, speaking to the false teachers, the 
false prophets, the false preachers. But as for you, and many people do this for money. Many people are plants of the enemy, the tares, the false prophets Jesus spoke about. But many are uh, just as deceived themselves as well. Many are just doing it for money. It's uh, it's uh, it's really sad. It's a it's a dirty game. It's uh, people are playing with God, and that's the last one you want to play with. But as for you, you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by the instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Yahuwah of armies. So I have also made you despised and abased before the people. Just as you were not keeping my ways, but showing partiality in the instruction. See, themselves not keeping the ways. And... None of us are perfect, but we need to walk in God's ways. We need to keep his commandments. This is serious. Do we not all have one father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal tre treacherously against his bro each against his brother as to profane the covenant of our fathers, the covenant with God? By dealing, dealing treacherously with one another, and this is what we see here in Matthew 24. First we get the opposite of that. Starting in verse 45, Jesus said, Who then is the, sense, the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household to give them the food at the proper time? The food is the word of God. Blessed is that slave whom his master finds doing so when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave says in his heart, my master is not coming for a long time and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour which he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so where it says, and begins to beat his fellow slaves, this is Jesus prophesying about these last days and and what is going on in the body of Christ. Everyone arguing, everyone going at each other's necks. We see this all over Facebook. We see this all over YouTube and other platforms. Uh, we're supposed to show love. We're supposed to be an example to the world. And we argue against each other more than anybody else does. God is against this, and this is what we see right here in Malachi chapter 2 as well. Do we not all have one Father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously each against his brother so as to profane the covenant of our fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of Yahuwah, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god. And daughter uh, means future. The daughter of a foreign god. So who is this foreign god? This foreign god is the same foreign god we see all throughout the Bible. This is Baal. Molech. And going back to the book of Genesis, this is Nimrod. This is where all this comes from. Nimrod. And so the daughter of the foreign god. It's a future Nimrod. Speaking about the Antichrist. And how Israel, Jerusalem, modern day Israel. Is going to be joined. To this foreign god. The daughter of this foreign god. Meaning the Antichrist. How they're going to be deceived by him here in these last days how they're going to join in a covenant with him a covenant of death a covenant with many so who is this from my understanding I, I believe this is the president's son-in-law I believe this is Jared Kushner who it's referring to here the daughter of a foreign god I believe that's who it's talking about 
who is going to make this covenant with many, the beast from the sea. And, you know, this part of it, I never realized when, see, see when doing my uh, Revelation 13 Bible study on the beast, on the Antichrist and the two beasts, and see, there's two beasts in Revelation. One, is consi one of them is considered the false prophet, the beast from the sea, from my understanding. But from my understanding of it, one of them is here, the beast from the, earth, beast from the sea is here on earth now. And I just told you who I think it is. And the beast from the earth, that's the beast that's in the pit in the book of Revelation, which is Apollyon, which is also Nimrod. And what I didn't realize when I did this study, what I didn't consider is, see, the Pantheon, the Trinity, all these other nations have a... Basically, for example, with the Egyptians, they have Ra and Osiris. Ra, the, the father, the Osiris was a son, but, and, but it was basically the same dude, basically. And then there's a wife, there's, in this example, Semiramis. So, basically, uh, Nimrod was the wife. I mean, Nimrod was a husband and the son of Semiramis. And I believe in the same way, this is what we see in the book of Revelation. How, how there's two beasts, which are the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. But I believe they're the same being. I believe, uh, I'll just say it, you know, because I don't care. I know I'm already watched and targeted and everything. I'll just say it. I believe Kushner is Nimrod. In some way, through whether through cloning, through genetic manipulation, in some way, I believe he is Nimrod. But Nimrod is also going to come out halfway through the tribulation, and then at the midpoint, come out of the pit and be the false prophet, saying, "Worship him, the Antichrist, the beast from the sea, who just revived from a deadly head wound," because. You know, I don't have a complete understanding on it, but I, I believe it's, uh, we know the two witnesses get hit, get killed at that point. I believe maybe the two witnesses kill the beast from the sea. And then the beast from the earth comes up out of the pit when the bottomless pit is opened. And... You hear that, that, hear that plane over top of me. And the beast from the pit, when the bottomless pit is open, comes out and kills the two witnesses. And then tells the world, uh, and basically, and then, re then resurrects. That, that's when the beast from the earth resurrects. And uh, Kushner, I believe. And, then the, and the, then the one that just came out of the pit tells the whole world to worship him. I believe Nimrod that comes out of the pit is actually the false prophet. And, you know, I have a, like I said, I have a Revelation 13 Bible study on this. If you want to check it out, I may end up doing another video to make it more clear uh, with the, the Revelation 13 and the Revelation 17 and 18 Bible study. Uh, my computer was running slow. I had, I mean, I had a lot of tabs open, but my computer was running slow. The videos had skips in it, and it was, it was a mess. But uh, I was able to get it out, and the enemy <laughs> didn't like it at all. I was, like I've said before, I was threatened, and I'll just leave it at that. But uh, this is my understanding on things, and this is who I believe is speaking about right here in Malachi chapter two as well. Judah has dealt treacherously, and, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Uh, potentially referring to the abomination of desolation. Um, but probably not. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of Yahuwah, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god, which I believe is the Antichrist. 
and and you know I I didn't you know I believe you know when I was putting this together when I was putting this study together I believe that's what God showed me I I, I wasn't thinking that myself but you know I believe the Holy Spirit told me that's who, who it is as for the man who does this May Yahuwah cut off from the tents of Jacob everyone who awakes and answers, or who, or who presents an offering to the Lord of hosts. Basically, you can't, you can't serve Baal and God. And we read in Matthew chapter 6, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other, you cannot serve God in wealth. And of course, you can't serve God in Baal. And this is why, also, one of the main things that God has against the church, against the body of Christ, is uh, eating meat sacrificed to idols, which is partic participating in the ways of the world. Same music, same movies, same holidays, and all this stuff, which is all Baal worship, basically. This is another thing you do. You cover the altar of Yahuwah, altar of the Lord, with tears, with weeping and groaning because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Yet you say, for what reason? Because Yahuwah has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously. And see, in most cases, God... In most cases, God uh, refers to his people as the bride, his, as the wife, and um, him as the opposite. But we also see in the book of Proverbs, wisdom, wisdom is Jesus in Proverbs. And it's referred to in the feminine, and this is what we also see here. Because who else was Israel in covenant with? Who else was the wife of in, in covenant with Israel like that? It was God. And more specifically... I believe this may be referring to what we see here in Revelation chapter 2. To the angel in the church of Ephesus. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. The one who walks among the seven golden lampstands says this. I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance. And that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you have put to test those who call themselves apostles and they are not. And you have found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And I believe this is what we see here in Malachi chapter 2. This is another thing that you do. You cover the altar of Yahuwah with tears and with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Yet you say, for what reason? Because Yahuwah has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, though she is your companion and the wife and your wife by covenant, left your first love, which is Jesus. We need to be close to Jesus. We need to be close to God. But not one has done so who has a remnant of the Spirit. And what did that one do while he was seeking a godly offspring? Take heed to your spirits and let no one deal treacherous, treacherously against the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says Yahuwah, the God of Israel, says the Lord. And him who covers his gar garment with wrong, says Yahuwah of armies. And the garment that's us, that's our bodies, our, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, basically, ho hopefully you understand what I'm saying, basically, if we sin, we're defiling our garment, we're dirtying our, our garment, our clothes, our soul, our, our bodies, and this is what it, basically the covering of God. For I hate divorce, says Yahuwah, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong, who does, who does wrong, who's in sin. 
says Yahuwah of armies. So take, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. You can't deal treacherously with God. God loves us so much. He's done so much for us. He, he provides for us. He protects us. How can we deal treacherously with him? You have wearied Yahuwah with your words. Yet you say, how have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of Yahuwah. Speaking about the false prophets and how they're saying, uh, even basically just believe and you're set for life. You're set for the kingdom of heaven. Just believe. Everyone who does evil is good in his sight. That's what they're saying. In saying that. Yet you say, how have we wearied him? And that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delights in them. Or where is the God of justice? Which is uh, kind of saying the same thing. See, it's about obedience as well. We have to stay in covenant with God. We have to walk in all His ways, keep all His commandments. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's all about serving Him. It comes down to who do you serve? See, anyone can uh, say they're a Christian. Anyone can say they love Jesus, but... Where is the evidence? The evidence is in our actions. Our obedience is the fruit of our relationship with God. The evidence of our relationship with God. So let's serve God with all our heart. All our strength. All our might. Let's love our neighbor as ourself. It's all about serving God. That's what this whole life is about. Serving God, having a relationship with Him. That is, you see the... I'm actually... Right next to this church. It's all about having a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's overcome, brothers and sisters. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our hearts. That's what it's all about. Serving God. And staying in relationship with him. Being close to him. Being close to our first love. Jesus. And teaching others the same thing. To stay close to God. To repent. Turn from their sins. Oh man, praise God for His Word. Uh, the Word of God is so amazing, and I'm, I'm just blessed. God has blessed me so much to be able to even speak His Word as much as I do. I mean, because I'm not doing this on my own. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for His name's sake, His reputation, His His character, His authority, for His name's sake, and and for y'all, for you guys, for for the believers. And for the unbelievers to bring y'all into the fold as well because it's not about us. It's about God and God offers us, offers, offers us a way to salvation, a way to eternal life. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ. The word repent means to have a change of mind, a change of heart. Deciding to turn from your ways and your life and turn into God for salvation. Just giving your life to Him. That's what the word repent means. And the gospel. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that so whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's all about, uh, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. 
See, God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order to live eternally. And none of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is death. That's permanent death of body and soul, the second death in the lake of fire. And because God requires perfection, we can't earn our way to eternal life. We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to being right with God. We can't be good enough to be right with God. God is holy and perfect. And this is why Jesus came. Jesus came and was born as a human. Lived a perfect life. Did nothing wrong. Made no mistake. Did nothing wrong. And in his perfection, he took on the punishment for us. Made the sacrifice for us. So that through faith in him, he is the bridge. So through faith in him, we have our sins wiped away and receive his perfection. We receive his righteousness through faith. And that's the only way. It's the only way to be made right with God. So give your life to Jesus. We're living in the last days. And you got to be willing to turn from your old ways, turn from your life. And, and God helps you. God, if you truly give your life to him, he, he gives you the Holy Spirit which is our seal. And the Holy Spirit helps us to walk in His ways. The Holy Spirit changes us. And I was changed overnight. I was completely changed overnight. Didn't want to do the same things I used to want to do. And God pulled me away from that and set me on the right track. And He can do the same for you. We're living in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. The judgment of God is coming soon. Destruction, unimaginable destruction is coming soon. Billions of people are going to die. We're talking about the most horrific stuff you've ever, beyond your wildest, wildest imaginations. It's, uh, it's all coming upon this world and coming soon. And there's only one way to life. There's only one way to eternal life, and that's through Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. So repent and believe the gospel. To all my brothers and sisters, again, let's spread the gospel. Let's walk in all his, all his ways. Let's overcome. Pray daily that you're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before him. Let's be ready. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's do all his will and everything. Let's shine his light and show his love. Praise your... Praise his name. Sorry, there's a distraction out here, people. That's the end of uh, Malachi chapter 2. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.